Well, that should be our prayer, shouldn't it? It really should. Thank you, John. Thank you, girls. Well, we read in the book of Exodus that the Israelites had become slaves in Egypt. Now, think with me for just a moment. This is God's people. God's people had become slaves in Egypt. And the Egyptians was not treating them very kindly. Matter of fact, they was being treated very, very bad. Very bad. They begin to cry out to God. And we will find what we'll read in just a moment. That God hears their cry. And He raises up a deliverer to save them and rescue them from their bondage in Egypt. Look with me in Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3, and we'll look at verses 1 through verse 10. Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through verse 10. We'll get there in a minute. Maybe we won't. That's okay. Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Let's read it together from God's Word. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back side of the desert, and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Now that shocked Moses. He's looking at this bush, and this bush is burning, it's on fire, but it says that it's not consumed. So notice what he does in verse 3. Moses said, and now he's speaking to himself, so you can tell he's getting older. Moses says, I will now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush is not burnt. Notice verse 4. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see... God called out unto him out of the midst of the bush, and he said, Moses, Moses. Now, if that would have been me, they would have had to pick me up off the ground. But Moses says, here am I. (laughs) Yeah, I'm Moses. I'm here. Verse 5. And he said, Draw not nigh here to put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Verse 7. And the Lord said, I have surely seen, now notice this, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt. And then he says, I've heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrow. Now let's pause here for just a think, just a moment. God knows what's going on. God knows what's going on with God's people today. God knows what you are going through. So I think what we need to do is what the Egyptians did. Excuse me, the Israelites did. They begin to cry out to God. 
and God heard their cry. He saw what they was going through. So maybe we could take this and we would see that maybe if more of God's people would cry out to God about what's going on in the world in which we live, I believe He would hear our cry. And maybe He would do what He did with the Israelites back then. And notice the next verse. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land. Not only is He going to deliver them, but He's going to bless them. Think about that. They're actually going to get more than what they're asked for. All they're wanting is just deliverance. Come and help us. But He says, not only am I going to deliver you, but I'm going to bring you into a good land, and a large and a land that's flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Pezrites and the Hittites and the Jebusites. Verse 9. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. Keep that in mind. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Let's pray. Father, dear Lord, I just pray that I would be able to speak your word today with your power, with your love, and that your people would respond in a way that you would be pleased. And Father, I also pray for those that may be here and watching online that do not know Christ as their Savior, that they will realize that they may not have tomorrow, that all they have is today to make a decision. Help them to understand that today is the day of salvation. Father, I just pray for your will to be done in all that's done here today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Wow. Folks, this is something that we just read there in Exodus chapter 3. God heard the cries of his people. And he now is going to respond to their cries. Now, we know that the Israelites are in their predicament because of some things that they themselves have done. They have, they was rebellious, they were stubborn, they were sinful. And many of the troubles that they're going through now is a result of that. I'm just assuming that what they're doing is they're crying out to God. Maybe God is reminding them what they have done in the past, and maybe they are repenting of that. Amen? And seeking forgiveness. And God sends them a deliverer. Now, this is interesting right here. He sends the most unlikely person to do the job. Matter of fact, Moses begins to make excuses, does he not? Uh, God, I can't do this. You're making a mistake here, God. You need to choose somebody else. I don't know how to speak. I can't speak. I'm shy. I I can't go up there and talk to Pharaoh. You're going to have to get somebody else to do this. And and we won't read it this morning, but maybe you'll study it a little bit later. God interrupts him and says, Did I not make your mouth? I know what I'm doing, Moses. You just need to do what I'm asking you to do. But folks do that today, do they not? Many times God leads us to do something and we begin to make excuses and we say, I can't do that. So did God make a mistake? No. Because any time God leads you to do something, he'll give you the power to do it if you just simply submit. And that's all that Moses really needed to do. He just needed to submit, just simply submit. God could have chosen many different ways to deliver his people. He could have done a lot of different things that would have, he could have killed every one of the Egyptians if he wanted to. But God works in very mysterious ways. In fact, if you study this, and we'll look at this again tonight in our Bible study, you'll see that he really does work in mysterious ways. He sends Moses 
to speak for him to demand that Pharaoh let his people go so that they can go and worship him and serve him. Moses makes many excuses, like I said earlier. But my friend, God does not make a mistake. I, personally, when God called me to preach, I said, no way. Mm -mm, he's surely making a mistake here. But God doesn't make mistakes. I could hardly read. I could hardly write. I couldn't speak very well. But if you just simply submit to God, God will give you what you need to do to do what you need to do. I still can't read well, I guess, and can't speak well at all. As you notice, the, the ites that we just read about, some of them correctly. And, and by the way, um, notice what I say right, not notice what I say wrong. So that's, that's a pretty cool thing. Um, back in the old days when I used to do the bulletins, I, I would always misspell something, and they would point out what I misspelled, and, and it's already done. There's nothing to do about it now. But I thought to myself, they never tell me how many words I get right. <laughs> and I got quite a few right. I did. Well, we read where God will send ten plagues to pressure the Egyptian ruler to let his people go. The plagues are the uh, the water turning into blood, uh, the, the frogs, the lice, the flies, the pestilence, the boils, the hail, the locusts, the darkness. And then the last plague was the death of the firstborn. But I want us this morning to just focus in on one of these plagues, and that's the frogs. You're probably thinking, what? Into the house of thy servants, and to the, thy people, and into thine ovens, and to the kenyan troughs. And the frogs shall come up both on thee and upon thy people and upon thy servants. And the Lord spake unto Moses and said unto Aaron, Stretch forth thine hand with the rod over the streams and over the rivers and over the ponds and cause the frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt. And Aaron stretched out his hand upon the waters of Egypt and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt covered the land of Egypt. There was frogs everywhere. There was frogs in the living room. There was frogs in the bedrooms. There was frogs in the ovens. There was, you open up a box of Cheerios, there was probably frogs in the cereal. There was frogs all over the land. Pull back the sheets and there's frogs in the bed. Frogs everywhere. Children walking to school, if they had school back then, I imagine they did. Frogs all in the streets. Can you imagine the women screaming and hollering? Now, maybe the women are different back then than they are now. Maybe they are. Maybe they're more... No, I'm not going to say what I was about to say. But um, maybe they're just different back then. But if the women back then was like the women today, Pharaoh was getting an earful. Amen? Let those stupid Israelites go. I'm tired of these frogs. I can just hear the screaming. Let them go. Let them go. And then we read down in um, verse 8 of chapter 8. So maybe somebody got Pharaoh's attention. And Pharaoh called unto Moses and Aaron, and he said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away these frogs from me, from my people, and I will let the people go, that they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. Notice, notice Moses' response. He thought, wow, this is easy. After just two plagues, now the people are going to get to go? Moses said unto Pharaoh, glory over me. He must have been part Pentecostal or something. He said, glory unto me. Man, this is cool. When shall I entreat for thee and for thy servants and for thy people to destroy the frogs from thy houses and that they may remain in the river only? That's wonderful. When do you want me to talk to the Lord for you? And then notice the next verse. <laughs> Pharaoh says, tomorrow. Let me tell you what, I bet you when Pharaoh got home that night, he got an earful. Can you just picture in your mind tomorrow? Not today. Tomorrow, I titled this message, uh, 
one day too late, but another title would be One More Night with the Frogs. One More Night with the Frogs. <laughs> Can you figure that one out? Frogs are everywhere. Everywhere. I, the, the sh slimy, green creatures all over the place. And he says tomorrow. Let me tell you something. Pharaoh is just like many people today. Many people today know what they're supposed to do. And I'm talking about God's people. God's people know what they're supposed to do. They know the predicament that they're in. They know probably as a result of what they have done. Maybe they're in that predicament. I'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. But they say, tomorrow. I turn back to God tomorrow. God has warned many people throughout his word and through his Holy Spirit as well. We do know that all of our troubles do not come because of our personal sins. Let me tell you something. If all your troubles came because of your personal sins, all of us would be in serious trouble. Amen? God is merciful. God is gracious. Listen to me very carefully. Some of your troubles may very well be the result of your unrepentance of what God is speaking to you about. And by the way, if we have problems in our life as God's people because of something that we're doing wrong, don't play ignorance on that. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you will know without any doubt because of the convicting power of the Holy Spirit that you're in the predicament that you're in because of your failure to turn to God. But many times what we do is one more night with the frogs. One more day with tragedy. One more day with misery. We just want to keep on and on and on. Folks, God is trying to get our attention. I personally believe that God is trying to get the attention of the United States of America. Amen? But most will not listen. Most will not hear. Most have their own agenda and most want to do what they want to do. Not what God wants us to do. In the book of Numbers, chapter 32, it says, Be sure that your sins will find you out. Then another verse of Scripture says, Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. And one thing that I just want to remind you of, and those that are watching online as well, something worse can come your way than what it did with, with the Egyptians, did it not? This was just the second plague. There was eight more. Eight more plagues that would follow after this one because they refused to let do what God asked them to do until they came to the last plague. And that was the death of their firstborn. Not only will your sin affect you, you personally, but your sin can also affect those that you love as well. Family. You can go into the Old Testament and you can see where the sin of one man affected multitudes of people. Is it any different than today? I don't think so. I don't think so. Pharaoh's sin of rebellious affected the entire nation, his entire family. God says in Hebrews chapter 3, Today if you will hear my voice and harden not your heart, and we as God's people, we can hear the voice of God. If you're not hearing the voice of God, there's something going on. Amen? We can hear the voice of God. I hear the voice of God in my spirit quite often. He speaks to me through his spirit and my spirit. He's not stopped doing that. Now, we don't hear audible voices. If I ever do, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what will happen. But we do hear the spirit of God. Amen? And I'm not going to say that God will not speak. I'm not going to define what God can do and cannot do. 
God do anything he wants to do, amen? Anything that he wants to do. But people are notorious for what they will do tomorrow. I have preached probably thousands of messages about full surrender to God to probably thousands of people. I bring a message like this, and many times I, I don't see much change. Does it bother me? Yes. I think I mentioned this to you one time, first church I pastored. I, I don't remember what I was even preaching on, but the lady left the service and shook my hand. She said, the problem with you is you think everybody ought to do what you say. I said, yeah, I do. When I'm preaching, of course, my wife says, don't pay any attention to me unless I'm in the pulpit. And that's not even nice to say. At all. <clears throat> Last week, we closed with Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. You remember that? We looked at it again Wednesday night. Brother Dave brought it up. That's total commitment to God, total surrender to God, become a living sacrifice. That's what God wants from us. But only a few will submit to God's will in their life. We know, according to 1 Corinthians 6, verse 20, the Scripture says that we're bought with a price. That's what the Scripture says right there. Therefore, glorify God in your body and your spirit, which is God's. What is the price? His life. His death. Jesus Christ came and gave his life for us. He died. All he asked for us is to live for him. I've heard many times, well, one day I'll give my life to God. One day I'll give my life to God. It's as if people are saying, give me one more night with the frogs. Give me one more day of wasted life. Give me one more day and I'll quit that drinking. Give me one more day and I'll quit that drugging. Give me one more day and I'll quit this fornicating and adultery and pornography and all this other mess. Give me one more day and I'll quit that sin. But not today, not today. One day I'll get back in church, but not today. One day I'll start giving my tithes and offerings, but not today. I've talked to many backsliders about coming back to God. And I've heard them say, I know I should. I know I should. But I'm just not quite ready. I will when I get ready. Well, that's dangerous. Folks, it's really, really, really dangerous. I just want to live another defeated life. That's as if they're what they're saying. John 10.10, 10, one of my favorite verses of Scripture. Most people live at the front side of that verse. The devil is stealing and killing and destroying. Jesus wants us to live at the end of that verse. That's where he wants us to live. He wants to See, when he decided to, to let the Israelites go, he wasn't just going to set them free and let them go into the wilderness. He's, he was going to give an abundant life. Amen? And when you and I accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, he don't want us to just live a miraculous life, a crazy life. He wants us to have an abundant life, a good life, a joyous life. You say, well, we can't do that. Yes, we can. It's not dependent upon what you have or what you don't have. It's dependent upon who you are in your relationship with Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Jesus experienced a lot of these tomorrow people in his ministry. Look with me in Luke chapter 9, the tomorrow people that he experienced. He says, It came to pass that as, the, as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I'll follow you wherever you want me to go. So this guy just came up to Jesus and said, maybe it's one of his disciples, I don't know. He said, I'll follow you wherever you want me to go, Lord. I'll follow you. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. By the way, you don't hear one more word from this guy. I don't know what happened to him, but you don't hear anything else from him. The next verse of Scripture, and Jesus said, Follow me and... Um, but he said, Lord, suffer me first to go bury my father. And then Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury the dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. We'll, we'll talk about that verse tonight, so don't let me forget. Then the next verse, and another also said, Lord, 
I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home and at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Wow. <clears throat> Tomorrow, people. We'll, we'll, we'll study them a little bit more tonight. But the, the, the message is this. There is nothing more important than following the Lord. And we can make all kinds of excuses. But they are all excuses. Moses made excuses. But when he was totally convinced by God that he was the man, he stopped making excuses. And committed his life to God. Jesus is asking for total commitment. There are many people like these. Many people. I'll come to church one day, as I mentioned earlier. I'll give one day. I'll join one day. I'll surrender one day, but not today. As a result of Pharaoh not submitting to God's will, tragedy after tragedy after tragedy after tragedy came. We know that a lot of Bad stuff is happening in our country, actually in the world. But think about, even, let's, let's just talk about America. And uh, by the way, I love America. I've got my, my wife said, why are you wearing a flag today? I said, I don't want a flag, it's a tie. It's a tie. I just wanted to. But I love America. I'm proud to be a citizen of the United States of America. But I'm ashamed of the direction that we're going very ashamed. The things that this country is now promoting. Let me tell you something. Those unborn babies, they matter to God. They matter to God. That many are having abortions every day. It's a life. It's a life. God's word talks about the marriage between a man and a woman only. But now our country passes laws and actually passes laws to protect those that are in sin. Don't misunderstand me. I don't think we should be judgmental at, at all. I think we should love all people. Amen? But you can't change God's word. God's word is God's word. What's right is right. What's wrong is wrong. It's got to the point now where people don't even hardly believe in marriage anymore. They just live together. And the government says if you live together long enough, you commit enough adultery long enough, you'll just be common law marriage. It's wrong. Gambling is wrong. Ask me one day and I'll talk to you about why. It's greed. It's greed. But now most, almost every state in the nation promotes gambling, use it as a fundraiser. So could it not be possibly that one of the re reasons our country is getting in the condition that she's in is because all the sin that we're promoting? And it's wrong. It's very wrong. <clears throat> Something worse may come. When death came to the home of Pharaoh... Too late for the firstborn that died. He finally gave up and he let the people go. But folks, we don't have to wait till tomorrow. We can submit to God today. And then the last reason why we don't need to spend one more night with the frogs is simply this. And I think this is maybe the most important one. Tomorrow may not come. There's people living today that will not live tomorrow. There's people that was living yesterday that are no longer living today. In Proverbs 27, 1, it talks about boast not thyself of tomorrow because tomorrow may never come. 
So let me just ask you a couple of questions, and I don't know what God may be dealing with you about. I, I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> but what if today was your last day to, sur to surrender to God? What if this was the last day? What's going to happen tomorrow? And then maybe tomorrow will never come. I want you to understand that if you're here in this service and you're lost, or if you're watching online and you're lost, according to 2 Peter 3, 9, Jesus wants you to be saved. I wonder how many people are in hell today thinking later they would accept Christ as their Savior. But they waited one day too late. And my friend, once death comes, that is it. There's no second chances after that. How many have died suddenly and opened their eyes in hell thinking, I was going to next week. I was going to, as soon as I got everything straightened out, I was going to. Let me tell you something. If you're waiting to get everything straightened out, you'll never get it done. If you're waiting to clean up your life, you'll never get it done. You don't have to worry about cleaning up your life. God will take care of that, Amen. God will take care of that. Look at Luke chapter 12, verse 16. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no more room to bestow all my fruits? He said, This is what I'll do. I'll pull down all my barns and build greater bonds, whatever, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, so, so, thou hast so much goods laid up for many years, take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. And God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee, then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided. This man would not have tomorrow. Don't misunderstand me. I think we should prepare for the future. I think people ought to think about what, what they're going to live on when they retire. Amen? I think we should, we should be saving things up for tomorrow. But not to the extent that it interferes with our relationship with God. Each day the news is full of sudden deaths. <clears throat> we hear it all the time. Automobile accidents. Drowning. There's two hurricanes heading into the Gulf. At least they'll probably become hurricanes before the end of the day. Storms. Sudden deaths. So I don't think we should put off tomorrow what God wants us to do today. I really think it's a very dangerous place to be. Very dangerous. <clears throat> because all who died yesterday, unexpectedly, had plans for today. And all who will die tomorrow, unexpectedly, never thought that would be their day. There will be people that will die today. I don't know what the statistics now, but many years ago, it was 5,400 people a day die in the United States of America. It may be more than that now. I don't know. It's a lot of people. But when death comes, it's over with. Think about the people that lived back during Noah's flood. Noah preached to those people for, what, over 100 years, I guess, while he was building that ark. And he would tell them what was going to happen. They need to turn from their wicked ways and turn to God. And then God closed the door to the ark. God closed it. 
And then the flood waters begin to come. And when those flood waters begin to come, I have a strong suspicion that there begin to be a lot of change of hearts. I wouldn't even doubt if there was people that tried to get into that ark. But they couldn't. When God closes the door, no man can open the door back up. No one can open the door back up. If you have never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're living in a very dangerous place. Because one day, the door to salvation will be shut to you. Today, there's people in hell that are begging for just one drop of water. And no doubt, plenty of regrets. Because in hell, you still have your memory. Do you understand that? You still have your memory. You'll, you'll remember every message you've probably ever heard on salvation. you remember all the songs. You remember the times that people tried to witness to you. You remember the times that God tried to get your attention. And you said no. But it's too late. I plead with you today. I plead with you today. If you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, don't wait till tomorrow. Because tomorrow may never, ever come. I want you to watch this brief video. <clears throat> Jesus Christ is coming back. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 42, Watch therefore, for you do not know the hour your Lord is coming. I want you to know, church, that Jesus Christ could come this month. Or he might come next week. Or he could even come... happen this morning before we ever leave. Well, I pray to God that not one person will be left. But if there's one person in this service that has not received Jesus and the rapture occurs, can you imagine the terrible place that they're going to be? The tribulation period, the great tribulation period? Very terrible very terrible. I've asked Pat and Bill to sing a song that I think has a wonderful message. It's entitled, One Day Too Late. So as God speaks to your heart during this message, I invite you, you don't even have to stand, I just invite you to just make your way out. And even, even right, listen, you don't even have to walk down here to get right with God. Do you understand that? There's no magic in my hand. You can get right with God right where you are. Those of you that are watching online in your living room or wherever you are watching, you can get right with God right then. But pay close attention to the message of this song. One day, too late. Never thought I'd see the day when you'd come to kneel and pray. I never thought that I would see 
the church filled to capacity and outside the door there's more who have never come before oh it's a shame that jesus came one day before is god speaking to you your heart now would you come One day too late Jesus came And you've been left behind to wait One day too late Yesterday you couldn't find Time for Jesus on your mind to call his name but one day too late listen to it listen closely too late and you if you're a child of God and God's speaking to you about doing something do it today do it today too late Jesus came and you've been left behind to wait yesterday you couldn't find Time for Jesus on your mind. You finally came to call his name, but one day too late. You finally came to call his name, one day too late. Father, dear Lord, I just want to pray again for that person that still has hesitation. Please, Lord, give them another chance. I plead with you. And as you give them one more chance right now, I pray that right now they would say yes. If they've never trusted Jesus as their Savior, Lord, I pray that right now they would say yes. And understand that Jesus gave his life so that they could have eternal life. And they would just turn to him and say, Lord, save me, forgive me. And I know you will. And Father, we who are not living the life that we should, show that to us. Get our attention one more time. That we would say yes to you. That it would not be one day too late. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you so much for the song. Thank you so much. Well, we will meet back here this evening at 530. And again, what we do in the, on Sunday evening, we just dig deeper into the message and give you an opportunity to ask questions, comment, make statements, and correct everything that needs to be corrected as well. So we look forward to coming back this evening at 530. I'm really looking forward to that. Next Sunday, Brother Dave's going to be bringing the message, and I... I know you're looking forward to that, and I have a suspicion. I was thinking some of the stuff that I was bringing about uh, over in uh, Exodus chapter 8. Uh, some of that, the, I, I think I know what he's going to be preaching on next Sunday, and I, it, it's going to fit in quite well just to be an addition to what we talked about today because we truly need to see Jesus. Amen. I believe if we could just get a good vision of who Jesus is, it would truly change our life. At least it should. Amen. It really, really should. Um, 
announcements. Um, look in your bulletin. We've got a lot of exciting stuff that's happening uh, in September, October. We hope to begin Sunday school back about the third Sunday in October. Uh, we hope to have um, the children's ministry kicked back off about the middle of September. Did I say September for Sunday school? That's what I meant anyway. Um, and then um, the pumpkin patch that you approved last Sunday night, it's going to be a major, major, major outreach, an opportunity to minister to lots of people out there, and that's going to be pretty exciting. And then the, um, the young adult ministry is about to kick off. Um, I think y'all got, actually you've already got a date planned And the purpose of this is to begin to minister and reach young adults. You say, well, what age is young adults? I don't know. I, I'm probably not a young adult anymore. But maybe you are. I don't know. But uh, it's for young adults. It's for young adults. And if you know young adults that you think that maybe this ministry could reach out to, talk to Dave about this, Paul about this, them and they will be more than happy to contact them. So let's pray about this ministry. Please, let's pray hard about this ministry. A lot of great things happen. Any, uh, any word or announcement, anything else? I am excited to be a part of a church that's on mission with God. Amen? I praise the Lord for that. Don't forget your offerings. Continue to, those, many of you are giving online. Thank you for that. But you're also just, you can just put your offering Tithes and offerings in the, um, the box on the Welcome Center table as well. So let's go to, would you stand with me and let's go to the Lord in prayer. And as we pray, Gary, would you lead us in prayer, please, brother?